Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Gyan Manji Vidyapit for the students of Standard 9 in which we are learning the subject of English. Students from today onwards we are going to start with a new chapter in the main book that is Behave. So, Behave new chapter, chapter number 9. Name of the chapter is the bond of love. Now, bond means an attachment which is joined right and it's quite special yes because uh, when we are talking about love right then the bond is quite fixed right it is very strongly attached that cannot be forgotten so easily especially if it is the bond of love it cannot be forgotten very easily right so uh, whether that is the bond between the mother and the child, whether the child is a male child, female child, whatever, the attachment with the mother, with the children, that is going to be a special bond, right? The children with their grandmother, grandfather, that is, the attachment is so real, the bond, the relationship, and the way the relationship is continued, it becomes so strong that it is called the bond of love. So we are going to learn about that, the bond of love. It's written by Kenneth Anderson. So uh, we have discussed this earlier also. It's better to uh, uh, know something about the author and about his background. So uh, we'll, go, we'll take a moment to learn about the background of the story. Now, uh, we were ruled by the Britishers and Kenneth Anderson has uh, written it while he was in India. Yes, and serving in the uh, British rule and uh, he lived in India along with his family. So, so did lots of Britishers who left England and came to serve with the first with the uh, East India Company and then um, the British East India Company was taken out over by the British government that we know and then we became a colony of England so now the government is directly dealing and so lots and lots of Britishers they were settled in India for one and another reason or either they were on the government duty right there were lots of um, uh, government duties to be done right for example a judge or a, a lawyer uh, that means a barrister Many had bought up land and they had made quite beautiful houses in India. And uh, because they knew they had to, they were on a long term basis, right? For example, the secret, uh, the civil services, right? So, in that way, many of them knew that they had to live in India for a long time. So, they had taken up land and made houses over there and they were living. So, we are talking about one such incident that happened during these times. So, we know for sure. Uh, background with which we can familiarize ourselves and then we can know the story in a more better way. Before we read, can there be love and friendship between human beings and wild animals? When we started the chapter, we, we were talking about the bond of love. The bond of love between a human being and human being. For example, the bond between uh, you and your sister. Yes, you and your brother is going to be very strong though you fight all day, but then at the end of the day, you sit together, have food, share food, share your thoughts, yes, laugh with him or her, and you totally, you don't even uh, remember for what thing you had fought in the morning. If somebody asks you, uh, oh, hai, chalta rata. yes, we are brothers and sisters, yeah, we are sisters, we are brothers. So, that is the bond of love, that, that is between human beings and human beings. Here, in the very sentence, first sentence, we come to know, can there be love and friendship between human beings and wild animals? Now, we have lots and lots of instances where there is a very true friendship between uh, an animal and a human being. We have, you must have seen lots and lots of movies also, where even the wild animals get very much attached with human beings and they forget that wildness. Yes, they will be wild for others, but with the human being that they have been living, 
right? We have lots and lots of instances, even in the uh, African uh, jungles in the continent of Africa, where there are uh, lions, uh, leopards, right? So in this way, even the lions, the cubs, uh, when found by some human being, right? Uh, there, according to the law, you can raise them, right? So uh, lions can be kept in the cub since its childhood, from since it was very young. It stayed with the person and then there is so much bondage between the two. There is so much love between the two. You must have heard lots of stories about it and uh, lost, uh, lots of stories and movies about it. Yes, and read about it also. So we know that there can be a very, very strong bond of love between a human being and wild animals that can be love, friendship is yes, animals because they love without any greed. It is a selfless love. Yes, whereas we know for as far as human beings are concerned, we have very selfish love, right? We try to uh, decorate the friendship so that the other person thinks that we are really true friends and we love each other and all that. But then when time comes back, the other person uh, withdraws the support and then you feel that I am betrayed. Right? So that happens between two human beings. But as far as the animals are concerned, the way they show love with human beings, it is truly a very selfless love. It is no selfishness in it. Yes, yes. jeans, Right? You don't give him any other thing apart from food and water that we usually serve. Right? It will be quite happy with us. Right? Uh, we don't mistreat them. We call them with lots of love. Yes, we play with them. That is what they need. So it's quite a selfless love. So the bondage between a human and another human, that's all right. But when it comes to a human and a wildlife, people uh, just take a moment to think how can there be a friendship or true love between a human being and an animal, right? But that can be true in some cases. Whole of this chapter is dedicated to it, right? Let's read a fascinating account of an orphaned sloth bear that was rescued by the author. Now, author is quite a matured person living for quite a while. Yes, after finishing his studies and uh, getting married in England, he came to India with his family and has been living with the family, right? So, he's quite a matured person and he likes to write, etc. And then, this story happened with him, so he has written down this story for letting us know what happens. Yes, how can there be love and friendship between human beings and animals? So, it is basically a fascinating account, fascinating, a very thrilling and exciting account. Account uh, story of an orphaned sloth bear. Sloth bear, you know, uh, it's found in the jungles of the uh, Himalayas. Yes, and they sometimes come down, sometimes come down to the plain areas also a little bit. I mean, they because they love forest and they apart from forest, natural forest, they are not found, etc. So, sloth bear. Sloth bear. It's um, quite slow and looks like a bear, but it is quite slower than the bear, right? and a uh, little bit lesser in size than a normal bear, right? Orphan, orphan who, who, who um, um, the bear lost its parents. So it is orphaned without, without a parent that was rescued, rescued, saved by the author. Now, let us know a little bit about the sloth bears. Sloth bears inhabit forested areas including the tropical rainforests of India and grasslands at lower elevation. Right? So sloth bears, they are typical inhabitants of the tropical area and tropical rainforests. So they can be found in the jungles of South India. They can be found in the lower jungles of the uh, Himalayas where it's not that cold. Right? So tropical rainforest, huge accumulation of this sloth bears are there. And grasslands at lower elevation. Yes, lower elevation, not that much high, but a little elevation height. Yes, so uh, grassland should be there, but not say, suppose 
uh, Srinagar, etc., where grassland is there, but then uh, uh, stretches and stretches of grassland are there, but then uh, the temperature falls down very much during the winter. So, not that much. So, it should be the um, less height and grassland, so they, they can be found over there. Sloth bears have very shaggy hair and long muzzles. Now, this is the description of the uh, so, uh, sloth bear. So, sloth bear, they have shabby, shaggy hair. Shaggy hair, it looks as if it is not combed and uh, not, not correct format is formed. Uh, for example, if you see a bear, right, it doesn't trim the hair that is the fur available on the uh, body. It doesn't trim it, but it grows in that way that everywhere it looks symmetrical. Whereas, if you see a sloth bear, then somewhere the hair is quite long on the body, somewhere it is quite short, so it's, it looks a very dirty one at first sight, right? So, a shaggy hair, long muzzle is a, um, a bear. A normal bear will have face somewhat like a human being, except the muzzle will be a little bit protruding out, whereas for the sloth bear, the muzzle, muzzle means the shape of the face, Yes, it looks semi-conical in shape. Yes, it is broader near the way and then it comes out. The nose is almost protruding outside too much. That's called muzzle. Muzzle also means the nostril, the area of the nostril, the jaw. It's quite quite long, protruding outside. Then that's called a muzzle. Using their claws to dig, they can then use their lips to form a tube. Now, what is their favorite food? Termites. Yes, termite is their favorite food for that. Now, dead and decaying trees that are fallen somehow uh, by wind or rain are just there, they've become too old or it has been infested with the, the termites, then this tree becomes dead and it falls down on the ground. So, the sloth bears, the termite is the favorite food and for that what they do? With the help of their quite strong nails and paws, the front, um, the forelimbs are used as hands yes, for knocking off the wood and then put the muzzle inside, right? And that is what that muzzle is for. Whole of the muzzle can fit inside, yes, and yet the eyes and face will still be out on the, uh, on the surface of the wood. But the muzzle, the mouth will be inside and then it forms a hollow tubing sort of, uh, sort of uh, a face and with the help of those lips, then the tongue is too sleek, it comes out and scoops all the termites that are in. Now, what is a termite? Uday bolte ham. That is termite. So, using their claws to dig. They will use their claws to dig inside the wood and they can use their lips to form a tube-like structure and then the tongue will come and go deep into the ground or into the heart to reach areas like the trees for their food. Their main food is termite. Right? Termite can be found in the wood and termite can be found in the ground also because they eat the wood and then come and stay in the uh, soil, right? So, find both the places, right? So, it can go deep into the ground, it termites, then ants, etc. All of that is food, right? But they like the most the termites, that is Udai. Hard to reach areas like the dead tree, right? The tree is not completely dead, but you punch somewhere, there might be a hole inside and then it puts the muzzle and scoops the termites from inside. You can hear them suck up their food from several feet away. Now, even the tongue can't reach in the inside of the area, right? Then what they do? They will get suck inside from the wood and all the termites. Termites are quite small, just a little bit bigger than uh, the flies, etc. So, when it sucks, such a huge body is sucking, then the termites cannot. Uh, just cling on to the wood inside and they get sucked up in the mouth. So that way, that is the poor way food and this is how it hunts for food. Now, uh, this is a small pic of how the uh, sloth bear looks like. Yes, you can see the shaggy hair. It's not grown evenly across the whole of the body and it has a small, long muzzle-like mouth. Yes, you can see a muzzle coming out, right? And protruding from outside the face and uh, this helps in boring quite a long hole in the uh, wood and then scooping up all the food from inside. This is the young one of the sloth bear. Now we start with the story. I will begin with Bruno. 
my wife's pet sloth bear. Now, sloth bear is a wild animal, right? But it looks as if the author's wife has tamed a sloth bear and not only that, it is living in the house as a pet and it was the favorite pet of my wife. That means there were other pets also. I will begin with Bruno. Now what is the name of that sloth bear? It is Bruno. Bruno is the name of the uh, of the sloth bear and it was my uh, wife's pet sloth bear. I got him for her by accident. Now it was gifted to the wife by the husband that is the author. Now the husband that means the author he got the sloth bear by an accident. Two years ago we were passing through the sugarcane fields near Mysore. So we are talking about Karnataka. Karnataka we know dense jungles right and sandalwood jungles. So they were passing the author and maybe his friends they were passing near a sugarcane field uh, in Mysore people were driving away the wild pigs from the fields by shooting at them. Now, as we just discussed, Karnataka heavily densely forested areas near Mysore and outside, right? So, lots of uh, wild boars or huge pigs, wild pigs, they continuously come out because sugarcane, yeah, we know it's a very sweet thing, right? So, elephants, pigs, and all sorts of wild animals, they come outside near the farm and they get a chance to get in and they will, they won't eat much but then they will destroy lots of sugarcane over there, right? And find them lots of sh uh, sugary or sweet food to eat. So the pigs had gotten into the farm uh, or the field and the farmers were trying, getting mad to take them outside and usually in, uh, in these areas which are very near to the forest. If the wild animals are uh, destroying your farm and field, then the government has given you rights to kill them so that they do not destroy. Because it is an uh, everyday instance where some or other animal might come. Yes, and usually these pigs, they come in uh, quite a lot of number. They don't come one and two, right? They come in a lot of numbers. So people were driving away the wild pigs. Usually you scare them this thali or chamach, you make lots of noise, they will go away. But sometimes, they, because sugar can fill, ek to sugar can ki height itni hoti and the whole field of that, it gets very difficult to know whether the pigs have gone away or the, where they are still there. So, with the help of firing at them, gunshots, you know, they are going to get scared, frightened, and they are going to run away. So, people were driving away the wild pigs from the fields by shooting at them. Yes. It's not for the purpose of killing, but it's for the purpose of driving them away. Uh, some, uh, some of the pig might get shot, right? It's no big deal. And we are talking about in those days, that is the pre-independence era, then what happens is, uh, there is not much thing like uh, the uh, protection of wild animals, etc. Those acts were there, but uh, you can say they were non-existent, they weren't working properly. Yes, and for hundreds and thousands of years, the farmers who live nearby the forest, yes, they know how to protect their fields. So sometimes they take chances and they might kill an animal or two, but their main purpose is to drive them away every time they come near the field. Some were shot and some escaped, right? Now, some of the pigs, they got shot and some of them escaped. We thought that everything was over. Now, you just stand at some height and you don't see any movement from the top on the uh, sugarcane fields. Yes, if an animal is passing through the sugarcane field, the sugarcane will be moving and that catches your attention and you know instantly that there are some pigs still. But then everything became quiet. That means all the pigs ran away. Uh, maybe most of them ran away. One or two might be dead. So assured that they won't come back today at least. Yes, tomorrow we'll again see. But today they are not going to come back. So we thought that everything was over when suddenly a black sloth came uh, black sloth bear came out panting in the hot sun. Now, along with the pig, a sloth bear had also uh, gotten into the uh, sh uh, sugarcane field, right? We know bear, 
बेर दे ईट हनी दैट्स दैट फेवरेट फूड दैट मीन शुगर ही आइटम्स सो समटाइम्स दे आल्सो डेवल अपॉन दी शुगर कैन फील सेम वे स्लॉट द मेन फूड इज थर्माइट बट देन मस्ट हैव गॉट टू ईट सम शुगर कैन सो व्हेन एवरीथिंग वाज ओवर सडनली अ ब्लैक स्लॉट बेर केम आउट नाउ देयर इज अ डिफरेंस ऑफ हाइट बिटवीन अ पिग इवन अ वाइल्ड पिग एंड अ स्लॉट बेर बिकॉज़ एन एडल्ट स्लॉट बेर इज गोइंग टू बी मच बिगर मच प्लंपर देन द Uh, wild boar or the wild uh, pig so instantly you can recognize because of that long muzzle we just saw the picture instantly we can recognize even from far that it is not a pig it's a sloth bear it came out of the field that means it was in open and then panting in the hot sun yes now if somebody has visited the sugarcane field it gets very hot inside because everywhere there are long uh bamboo like uh, sugar cane growing and heat gets trapped over there right it gets suffocating over there inside so and the shots were fired from this side so automatically the pigs must have ran away to the forest from the other side but this one was coming towards the farmers who were shooting right so it came in the opposite direction the bear came out panting panting it was heavily in need of breath and it was puffing because it might have ran for quite a long distance into the hot sun that means it was in the clear area where everybody can see the sloth bear now i will not shoot a sloth bear want only a very good word is used to be want only is yes, what is the meaning of want only because i am happy i just want to fire the gun yes pigs okay now if you don't kill the pig and if it's coming your way if you don't kill the pig then uh, uh, you are in a real mess right it will really mess up with you yes it has quite big uh coat tree in front of it and quite gnarly and it's quite strong this tree has quite strong in with with one force of its head uh, it can tear a hole in your legs and even crack your bones right it's very strong and powerful pig wild pig it's quite strong right so uh, if it's a pig without thinking i got to shoot but i know it's a sloth bear and just because i want to fire a gun and kill the wild animal i'm not going to do that yes wild sloth uh, sorry uh, sloth bear they are the harmless creatures because one we know they eat termites right so that is that favorite food yes and they they don't eat or they don't eat um, uh, human beings etc right so they aren't they are in sort harmless they are wild yes if danger comes they know to protect themselves they have those um, uh, annoying uh, teeth uh, sorry um, uh, the nails right on the paws and they can protect themselves very well if time comes but it is quite a very simple simple wildlife animal right so uh, just because i want to shoot something has come out from the field and it's an urgency inside me that i not need to shoot no that's not going to happen so want only means because i want to because i feel happy to shoot i learn to like fire a gun no i will not shoot a sloth bear want only for pig it is want only right but for a sloth bear if i know it's a sloth bear i'm not going to shoot it but unfortunately for the poor beast somebody else did i i won't shoot i had a gun in my hand maybe but i will not shoot any animal that comes out of the sugarcane field out into the open i saw it i recognized it it's a sloth bear there is no need to it will just go away right so if it knows i am standing over here then it will take another turn right and perhaps two three people over there it will again go back into the sugarcane field it's not that harmful one right so for want only purpose i will not shoot it but for the poor beast somebody couldn't resist and fired one of my companions did not feel that way and shoot it that way about it and promptly shot the bear on the spot now it came out of the field it was quite near to me i recognized it and i will not shoot but one of my companion didn't know about those things about the sloth bear right and couldn't have my view of looking at it and might have got frightened or just a wild animal has come outside and we don't know anything about it because oh, it might be all the britishers over there and shot it promptly immediately without wasting a minute or a second shot the bear on the spot that means uh, 
the software might must be quite near and when the shot was fired when the gun was fired this immediately on the spot the bear died as we watched the fallen animal we were surprised to see that the back fur on its black on its back moved and left the prostrate body now the sloth bear died immediately as the bullet hit it and it died and it was lying quiet on the ground without moving yes animals they don't know to pretend right i'll pretend as if i'm dead and when we come near i'll just shoot away no they are dead they are dead right so it's not moving confirms that it is dead but the sloth bear it's black we saw the picture right on the back somewhere something another black mood and separated itself from the sloth bear right that is the meaning to see that the black fur on its back whole of the whole of it is black fur on the uh, sloth bear right black ke upar bhi kuch black tha which moved and separated it from the and left the prostrate prostrate lying flat that is prostrate right lying flat on the bar on the, the uh, sloth bear died and it was lying flat prostrate without moving that black fur ke upar se dusra black fur got separated from the body and moved then we saw it it was a baby bear that that sloth bear was carrying yes yes bears they carry their young ones on their back right um, so in that way uh, the sloth bear was carrying its young one on its back and that is why it was frantic rather than going towards where the pigs went it came in the opposite direction and it came in the open where everybody can see it and somebody fired the sloth bear died at the same time it was carrying a young one on its back that young one because it was concealed camouflaged in the black fur of its mother now because the mother is lying flat on the ground that young baby separated itself the young one separated itself now we can see two black furs one a small one one a big one large one had been riding on its mother's back and then we saw it was a baby bear that was had been riding on its mother's back when the sudden shot had killed her it was a spontaneous yes error mistake yes somebody might have got frightened all of us had heard the gun is the hand the gun is in the hand and the finger is on the trigger and didn't even mean to kill the sloth bear but just shocked that the finger sniped uh, snipped back and pulled the trigger that is a body reflex might have been an error but an error has been made that shot proved very deadly for that sloth bear and it died on the spot and the young baby because now the sloth bear the mother is lying flat on the ground without moving and the young one got down from its mother's back and we can now see two black furs um, uh, over there one the baby which was riding on the back on its mother's hand had been shot and killed her the little creature ran around its prostrate parent making a pitiful noise it's a young one yes all it has seen in this world since it came it's quite young right so it is the mother right the mother has not, never allowed any danger to come upon that little one young one yes and it is common common among all the animals whether it is wild one tamed one right domesticated one it is very common yes even the uh, dog that you might be having at home right if uh, young ones are given birth very soon it won't allow you to touch it right it knows that this is my home and these are the people who had have you know, kept me as a family member of the house yet the young ones until the mother becomes very very satisfied that the uh, the puppies they are safe in the hands of these family members they will allow the touch but they'll stay over there to see that no harm is done to the puppies right so in that way each and any, every animal especially the mother right looks after that no danger falls upon the young one and it's quite a real bonding that we see over there right so here 
the young one is so young that it doesn't know of any danger but it knows only its mother now the mother is lying flat on the ground prostrate and it's dead the young one doesn't understand that the mother is dead but it goes on circling and it gives quite uh, small small sounds to arouse her from its sleep and get up and it is pitifully cry, cry now we take those sounds as pitiful for the uh, for the young one yeah young one is crying it is afraid and on top of that mother is not moving and responding so it gets afraid and the sound becomes more shrill and that is why we think that it is a very pitiful cry that the young one is giving in order to uh, awake the mother from sleep so the little creature the young one of that sloth bear it kept on going around and around its mother's um, that is prostrate parent making a pitiful noise every time with that muzzle trying to poke her up yes uh, and we know how it sounds right uh, the dead uh, mother and the small little one going round and round poking its nose trying to push her so that if she is uh, fallen asleep or unconscious then hearing the sound or just by a little bit push it might wake up again right but that's not going to happen i ran up to it uh sorry i ran up to it to attempt a capture now i know that small little uh, sloth bear young one so the mother is dead and it's going round and round so i attempted to catch it so uh, that's not going to be easy that is really not going to be easy because mother is not there and the little young one is quite afraid and frightened of everything because now everything is totally new to it because for once the young one has never even seen a human being right and a very tall vertically standing human being is in front of it the small uh, young one might have seen the wild lab the sloth bear uh, young one might have seen other animals walking on four but it has never seen an animal which walks on two yes well dressed gentleman having a rifle right it scooted into the sugar cane field scooted make a short run and that also speedy right that's called scooting right and you know as soon as you pick up a stone the dog which has been barking on you right suddenly scoots right so that is scooting yes it turns back and runs away as fast as possible right uh, it doesn't know your aim yeah it's not good scooted in the sugar cane field so as soon as i tried to catch it it made a short break towards the sugar cane field and with full strength in a very short time disappeared in the sugar cane field following it with my companions i was at last able to grab it by the scruff of its neck now finding a small animal in a sugar cane field is like finding a needle in the haystack that's a proverb finding a needle it's a very difficult task so without wasting much time you got to keep running behind that animal so that you are able to catch it and it's a young one right so for young one even a small stone is the biggest obstacle right it, it doesn't know how to go around it so it's going to jump over it or climb it and jump so every small thing is a big obstacle from it so the author knew once it disappears inside the sugarcane field it will be impossible to track it down and it is very necessary to save that young sloth bear young baby of the sloth bear because it cannot be independent on its own even it's so small that even the stray dogs are going to kill it and if it re does reach the uh forest then there are other animals which are going to eat away and uh, that will be an end to it so we ran behind it and i was successful after just after small time because the baby was not able to go too much inside the sugar cane field following it with my companions i was at last with quite a lot of difficulty because you, you can't just catch it like that it's not just standing and allowing it to get wild animals don't do it like that right so able to grab it now how to catch it because it has quite sharp nails and paws with which it is going to defend itself and plus it has teeth right so it doesn't allow you to catch it so right so you have to catch it by the cruff what is the cruff it has lots of skin on the neck 
where lots of hair also grows. So if you catch it like that, it becomes as if a handle is over there, invisible handle. That is that gruff way, a scruff that is we are talking about. Yes, that will be a lots of gruff of skin over there and the scruff of its neck. That means where lots of uh, uh, extra skin is there and there will be extra hair over it to protect it. Right? So scruff of its neck. While it snapped up and tried to scratch me with its long hooked claws. Now, when you have caught the animal from its neck above, then whatever it tries to, because it can't move its head back, so it's, it cannot catch you eh, with its uh, mouth, teeth. But it has its four legs free and it was trying to uh, scratch me with nails. But then again, the young animal is not going to be successful at it. Why? Because it's impossible for them. We can uh, move our hands in any way we want, but uh, the animals which walk on the floor, it becomes very difficult for them to move their hands or any forelimbs, hind limbs in the backward way. Yes, you cannot do that. Scrap, uh, snapped and snapped, tried to catch all of a sudden and tried to scratch me with long hooked claws. Claws, uh, the nails on top of it, right? So. It tried to do everything to set itself free, but I had caught it from the right way, from the uh, scruff of its neck, so it cannot do anything to me. We put it in one of the gunny bags we had brought, and when I got back to Bangalore, I duly presented it to my wife. So, there was gunny bag, gunny bag we knew, uh, yes, the kothala, which is made up of jute, right? So, in those days, jute was used to pack all the uh, um, uh, agro products, yes, whether it is sugar, whether it is wheat, whether it is rice, flour, or whatever. So, uh, lots of gunny bags are over. And they were in the um, uh, wildlife area, yes, uh, just before the forest started. So, they had brought, brought gunny bags with, him, uh, with them to fill up some things, and they had lots of it. So, we put it on. Uh, in inside one of the gunny bags and then tied from the top it cannot come out we had bought brought and when i went back to bangalore when i went back to bangalore i duly presented it to my wife she was delighted and an exclamation mark was mark is given yes first thing is sloth sloth bear and the young one effort it looks more or less like a baby bear cub right so uh, it almost looks the same. Only thing is the muzzle will tell the difference that this is not a bear. Right? Otherwise, it's a very cute one. All the animals, right? Even the chick of a hand or the uh, cub of a, an, an, a tiger or lion or you can say the puppies and the kitten. All of them, when they are young, they look very, very cute, fluffy and very soft to touch. And, and anyone will admire and want to take it. Right? Uh, so, the wife was immediately very delighted that my husband has brought me a small bear cub. She at once put a colored ribbon around its neck. What's the meaning? It is my pet. Yes, you need a collar around the neck of your pet animals. This is by law. And the author and the wife both come from England. So, uh, British people, they are known for their manners, their etiquettes. They're uh, following the rules and regulations, right? So, it is your pet. Then you should have a collar properly, right? So that uh, you don't fall into breaking law. You can't take your dog outside for a walk without a collar. Otherwise, the dog will be taken away by the authorities. You've got to prove it, then you've got to pay a fine for it, right? So it is better that the collar should be there, and if necessary, if the dog doesn't obey you, then you've got to have it on a leash, right? So, and the chain, right? With one hand at your hand, so that you can control your dog. So immediately, the first thing done, you have given me, and it's a pet, it's a small one, so automatically, a red ribbon, temporary, till they get hold of some belt, right? Immediately, a ribbon was wrapped around its neck and after discovering the cub was a boy, she christened it Bruno. Now, you got to see the uh, gender of the animal, right? So, it was discovered that it was a uh, male, male cub, right? And 
uh, so it has to be given a name so it was christian the christian means to give a name right in all the religions all the religions of the world all the customs tribe everything it's a tribe also we all have a special ceremony where we for the first time give the name to a young one right even means living anywhere in the world living in whichever social condition status all the human beings we have a tradition all the religions they have a tradition of giving a name on a particular day and that is called christening so the she christened it you know of course now it's a wild animal so you can you don't need it to take it to a church and christen it with all the customs and traditions you just give a proper name so christen named it bruno bruno soon took to drinking milk from a bottle now this is very very necessary why because uh, you must have seen in some national geographic uh, documentaries and short films also that very very young cubs they are still feeding on the mother's milk they don't have that uh, uh, teeth still grown up to gnaw at uh, the flesh and uh, so what happens is that teeth is not strong enough for the uh, carnivorous animals right that the teeth are still growing and they are not strong enough to cut meat or eat meat or chew meat so they have to be they have to be fed by the mother's milk right and young ones if they are found orphaned right there is a great problem of giving them because they are not able to suck up like dogs you must have seen right and then they say, they drink up the milk right puppies also they look at the mother and uh, but puppies also for quite a lot of time they are feeding on the mother's milk right and in that same way it has to be fed so we do have an answer for it the bottle with nipples that we give to the young babies right human beings children right when they are very young yes apart from mother's milk they are fed with bottle that has a nipple on top of it a little lukewarm uh, milk is poured into it and the nipple is on the top with the lid yes with a hole and then we give it to the child slowly the child also learns ah bottle agai is a nipple movement so keep on sucking the uh, milk from the bottle with the help of that nipple so the same way the cub was to be fed with milk because now till now uh, it's so young that it does not have anything other than milk so this is a very good line bruno soon to drinking now it was used to have milk from mother right from the nipples of the mother but now what happens is it has to adjust itself now mother is not there but uh, you just uh, wet the uh, bruno's mouth with a little bit of milk and it smells that milk and it it is already accustomed to having Uh, milk from the nipple of the mother so here also similar shape nipple is there and it will suck on it and once it knows when you suck milk comes out of it so slowly slowly the uh, young one that sloth don't know yes is going to yeah. so it took some time but then he got used to the bottled milk bruno soon took to drinking took to means got used to please understand this took to means got used to drinking milk from a bottle it was but a step further and within a few days he started eating and drinking everything else it lasted for a few days right then uh, of course uh, the uh, famous uh, the most popular thing is given is say some rice and dal and all that it's quite soft right so this way we start making the child eat something solid and it leaves milk and then starts eating solid things so here also the whose pet it is it is the author's wife right mother female so it knows very well how to deal with the young ones so for a little bit of time is yes, until the cub get adjusted in the family with the human being still then milk was given to it in a bottle and slowly along with the milk some hard stuff was also given and then within a few days it was ev- eating everything and drinking everything now 
you don't have to worry about how to feed it. Yes, you just give him food, it will eat. So it was one step further from the mother's uh, milk. It came to the bottle milk. That is a great achievement. And once you achieve that, you train it to have other food. But it was but a step further and within a very few days, he started eating and drinking literally anything that you give it. Right? Because that is that is that innocence of that young one. Yes? It puts full trust on you. Right? It loves you without any selfishness. And it puts trust on you without even thinking for a second. Yes? You must have seen. Yes? Children one year, one and a half year, two year, you try to give them a chocolate, right? They look towards the parents to see an acknowledgement. Mundi hilti hai ki nai. Right? Hilti hai to, ek to le lenge, phir dusra bhi. Udur se haan agai, so you keep giving. Right? So that is not the case with this young ones, wild animals. Right? They put trust on you and then that trust is complete. Yes? Whatever you give it, yes, it knows and that is something to be eatable and it eats, right? So few days he started eating and drinking else, everything else. And everything is the right word. Everything is the right word. Whether it is eatable or not eatable, whether you give it or not. Because it doesn't know. It is accustomed to whatever is provided by the mother. But right now, the mother is absent, so it doesn't know whether it should eat it, whether it should eat it in which way, whether it, it is eatable or not eatable. Everything means everything. He ate porridge made from any ingredients, porridge, some liquid squash thing, right? Um, fine chipped vegetables or fruits, milk, uh, mix it with the milk or mix it with dal bath, whatever. You just make a porridge, hotchpotch of it, right, in some crushed way. Yeah, you find well, not big but small small bits of vegetable or fruit or whatever mixed with any 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 liquid it will just sip it away and eat every scratch from it right he ate porridge made porridge or oh, kheer bolte that's one same thing made from any ingredients yes vegetable fruit nuts meat also especially pork it loves pork curry rice regardless of condiments and chilies Yes, chili, mirchi, hai, to bhi kha jayega, nahi hai, to bhi kha jayega, cheese, hai, right? It doesn't worry about the ingredients. First thing, it doesn't know human food, right? We think it, this is chili, this is bread, this is cookies, this is biscuit, yes, this is a toast. It doesn't know that difference. It smells the food and it knows this is cereal, this is fruit, this is... Uh, animals, they have their own way. We separate the food, they don't, right? So you give porridge with any n number of ingredients, yes, it's going to eat, right? Uh, condiments and chilies, that means humko dal mein haldi chahiye, namak chahiye, mirchi chahiye, they are condiments. Usko nahi chahiye, hai to bhi thik hai, nahi hai to bhi. Okay, very good, right? So, chilies, bread, whatever you give in that porridge, bread, eggs, chocolates, sweets, pudding, ice cream, etc., etc., the list is long, right? And we should remember that these people are foreigners, right? So, they have their, that type of taste for their food. So, it's all okay in their house, right? Whereas, you go to any Indian house, that will be... Uh, dal, chawal, khichri, kari, uh, all those things, and that is what the pet also gets, right? Anyway, as for drink, and, uh, and that was for eating, and eating is porridge, kheer, just a kuch liquid, so that because it's still a baby, is you cannot just feed it all the hard stuff, yes? So it has to be in some semi liquid form, right? So you make a Kheer, that's curry, porridge, right? You make it with any ingredients. You put sugar, you put salt, you don't put salt, mirchi, nai mirchi, anything. You put eggs in it, bread in it, yes, some cereals and chocolates and sweet, anything. You just give it ice cream in it, yes, it's okay. He'll drink it, everything. Yes, and he will eat everything. Now come to drink. As for drink, right? Whether it is milk, tea, coffee, yes, 
नींबू पानी लाइम जूस अरेटेड वाटर व्हाट इज अरेटेड वाटर जो सोडा पीते हो दैट इज अरेटेड वाटर राइट देन बटर मिल्क चास बियर सी द स्पेलिंग आ गया नहीं है B D P L E R and B E A R. Many students yet mix up these two things. One is bear and another is beer. Bear is B E A R that is to be spoken as bear. लेकिन हम गुजराती जो है B E A R is spoken as beer. No, if we go to the we follow the English dictionary, right? So it will be bear, right? So B D P L E R. Beer, that is a semi-alcoholic uh, liquid or liquor. Alcohol liquor, you give it. In fact, anything you give it to, it should be drinkable at human strength. Yeah? It should be liquid. You give it anything: tea, coffee, uh, sarbat. That is that lime juice is uh, something. Add it soda. You give it. You give it um, a, a beer, alcoholic drinks, whatever you give, it will just sip up that, right? it all went down with relish this is a very good word relish enjoyment yes he didn't make a bad face like you people make yes khali mein kuch galat aa gaya galti se kha liya yes ha uh -uh. so pachan churan ki goli kha li kaisa munh kadwa ho jata hai right so uh, you give a very bad sign over there right no here nothing goes wrong it is eatable you don't worry about the taste it just goes goes down and into the stomach food pipe and then into the stomach and he enjoys eating whatever you eat so that that is relish relish fun happiness we stop over here for the day thanks to you